88 videos, over 550,000 subs, and tons of pissed off people on Twitter, it's safe to say I had a pretty good year. So I've decided to celebrate by ranking my 15 favorite videos. Starting off with my most underrated vid, 7 things to do before inviting a girl over. It's finally happening! You somehow convinced a girl to come over your place. But if you want to go from lotion and wanking to choking and spanking, you're going to have to prepare. So here are 7 tips to prepare for... Number one, clean! Clean everything! Your balls, your sheets, your balls again! You need to make sure everything is smelling and looking fresh, especially your bathroom. Guys' bathrooms are naturally filthy, and it's not our fault. Dirt is like infrared light, where we just can't see it. Don't believe me? Go to your bathroom right now and look around the toilet. Yeah. Repulsive, right? You didn't even know that shit was there until someone pointed it out. But you know who will notice? Any girl. So make sure your bathroom, along with the rest of your place, is spotless, or your mirror will be the only thing you're smashing. Number two, fun activity. You need to prepare a fun activity you both can do. And no, I don't mean Disney Plus and Thrust. Thinking with your dick is why it's been three years since your last lay. I mean plan something fun to do, like cook a meal together or challenge her to Mario Kart. Get her used to playing with your joystick before you rev her engine. Also, make whatever you do a competition. Having steaks will raise the excitement and make the journey to the massage table even easier. Number three, nice outfit. A nice outfit can trick a woman into thinking you're more attractive than you really are. That's why women love a guy in a suit, because it gives the impression you're a successful businessman instead of a struggling adult who can't do his own taxes. And just because you're staying in doesn't mean you shouldn't dress nice, so put on a nice button-up, freshly ironed pants, and a belt she can take off with one hand. Just remember, nothing will make a drier than cargo pants with some Crocs. Number four, food and drinks. Certain food and drinks can help enhance the mood. Let's start with the most important one, wine. Wine is like Viagra for women. It'll impact her decision making just enough to make her forget that you're a manager at Bed Bath & Beyond. Besides, you're going to need some chemicals stirring around her brain if you hope to smash in her Lightning McQueen bed. Next, you're going to want to pick up some food. Food is the quickest way to a girl's heart. She could catch you texting your side piece, but wait, are those cheesy fries? Oh, they look so good. Don't, th don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Just keep eating. Keep, keep eating. Number five, environment and ambiance. Take a look around your place. Anything that screams forever virgin, hide in a closet. So all your Star Wars posters, Funko Pops, and especially your Nizuko body pillow. Next, you're going to want to ask your roommate or family for some privacy. I remember the first time I invited over a girl, my brother's like, hmm, now's a good time to do laundry. Like, bitch, this isn't WWE. I'm not going to tag you in for some two-on-one action. Leave. Next, you're going to want to set the mood. Light some scented candles, turn down the thermostat, and play some music low enough where you can hear her talk, but loud enough where you can drown out the sound of your roommate fapping. Number six, groom. We all know men are disgusting. If it wasn't for the prospect of getting laid, we would just live in our own filth. So now is a great time to make yourself look presentable. To make it easier, I separate into three categories. Shave, trim, touch. You're going to want to shave your balls, your back, and that Anthony Davis eyebrow. You're going to want to trim your nose hairs, beard, and those Wolverine claws. And you're going to want a touch of deodorant and cologne. Just make sure not to OD in the cologne. All you need is a drop in your wrist, your neck, and right above your Johnson. Number seven, equipment. Make sure you're stocked up on condoms, lube, tissues, beads, anything you might need in case things work out. Sure, you may not use them, but has that saying go? I'd rather have plugs and not use them than need them and not have them. Eh, something like that. Point is, make sure you're prepared with all the tools necessary to make your night a magical one. Number eight, lying. Lying is the most important part of getting laid. Women don't want honesty. They want plausible deniability in case it doesn't go well. What? I thought we were just playing Mario Kart. Okay, I guess we're kissing. <laughs> Remember, women don't want to pork you. They want to pork the person they think you are. And they think you're a clean, charming fella with no ulterior motives. Women even lie to themselves. Like, bitch, you shaved your cooter and didn't think things were going to escalate? Really? So those are all my tips on how to prepare for <laughs> If you found any of these useful, then be a homie and share it with some friends. Because no guy wants to go from cream pies to no replies. From sloppy head to left unread. From swallow to no follow. From licking your balls to no new calls. From hitting the back to never coming back. From making it squirt to leaving you hurt. From being humped to getting dumped. From sitting on my face to saying, I need space. From clapping cheeks to not hearing hearing you in weeks, from thumb in the butt to I don't give a fuck, from licking your bean to leaving you unseen, from happy smiles to your call cannot be completed as dialed. Oh, and your hoodies. Hide your hoodies. Women love to steal hoodies. One of the most crippling addictions you can face is gambling. Just one double or nothing and say goodbye to your empire. That's why I find the idea of going to a casino so fascinating. Because we've all heard the house always wins, yet Vegas is still one of the top tourist destinations. So enjoy my 14th favorite video on why gambling is stupid. Idiots. So many people are idiots. The fact that Las Vegas exists proves my point. You see, casinos are like your pastor. They promise you happiness, but end up taking advantage of you. Just take a look around. Giant water fountains, the Eiffel Tower, that can pass as people. How do you think they can afford this shit? 
By selling tickets to the buffet? Mm-mm. It's by convincing suckers that they're smarter than multi-billion dollar corporations. How many times have you heard someone say, This is my hot seat, or my lucky slot machine? Spoiler alert, luck doesn't exist. If it did, your dad would have decided to pull out years ago. Another phrase I hear all the time is, My number hasn't popped up, so it's due. Like, why don't you go outside and huff some paint? Because you clearly don't understand how probability works. If there's a hundred numbers, and the number seven pops up ten times in a row, do you know the odds that it'll pop up an eleventh time? One out of a hundred! Just because because it popped up before has no impact on it popping up again. But even if you're bad at math, just take a look around a casino. They're built specifically to milk you for all you got. There's no clocks or windows, so you don't realize how long you've been gambling for. They use chips and cards, so it doesn't feel like you're using real money. Machines have flashing lights and sounds that give you dopamine rushes. And, best of all, they serve you free alcohol. Nothing in life is free. If your girlfriend gives you a free blowy, know you'll end up paying for it later. So casinos aren't giving out drinks out of the kindness of their heart. They're doing it to stir chemicals in your brain brain to disrupt whatever little bit of object reality you have left. We've all made dumb decisions while drunk. Now imagine being plastered next to an ATM. Could you not see how this shit could go off the rails? And people still go to Vegas thinking they're going to make it big, when the only thing that they're winning is chlamydia and divorce papers. But why offending everybody are you going this hard on gambling? Well, for starters, every idea I have is random. I refuse to be like these other basic bitch stick figure channels just copying everyone's idea and never coming up with anything original. But what really spurred this idea was I was on a cruise recently and I like to play this game called Find a pathetic person. It's not what you think. It's where I walk around a casino trying to find the most pathetic person. Oh, that's exactly what you thought? Oh, okay, I'm glad we're both on the same page. Anyway, I ended up bumping into a guy who said he loved to gamble, and I'm trying my hardest not to question his intelligence. He was wearing a Nikocado avocado shirt, so things were looking a little bleak in the IQ department. But trying to be objective, I decided to hear him out. I said, why do you feel like you'd win in a casino? And he said, oh, well, it depends on which game you play. I'm like, okay, well, what game do you play? He said, oh, I'm really good at blackjack. His face looked like Bella Ramsey, so I'm thinking maybe he's one of those autistic savants. I'm like, how are you so good at blackjack? Now he's starting to patronize me, saying, bro, there are tons of books on it. So in his mind, if there's a book, it must be true. That's why Kanye is like, guys, I'm not anti-Semitic. If you just read a little bit of mine, you see that I'm totally right. So I say to the guy, okay, hear me out. Imagine you're a corporation who makes tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars providing games. Each game provides you a higher statistic for winning each round. So even if it's a 51% chance, the house will still net benefit over time. Now what you're telling me is one game has a higher chance of people winning. Do you think a company is like, you know what? We're making way too much money off these games. Let's just give people one game where they can win more often. Sure, we lose money, but I'm just a company who cares not only about earning tons of money, but people too. So he doubles down and says, well, you just have to know when to walk away. I'm like, walk away? Well, what does that even mean? When is the right time to walk away? As soon as you make a profit? As soon as you double the money that you came in with? Or is it percentage base where you make 15% or more and you walk away? Please tell me in your head, what does the term walk away actually mean? And his response was, and I quote, it's just a feeling. Which, to be honest, sums up this entire video. It's not statistics or logic that makes people play these clearly rigged games. It's a feeling. So why waste your time working hard for money when you can just pull a lever and have a machine decide it for you. So that's my video on why gambling in a casino is stupid. If I miss any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, the only smart gambling is spoon feeding drinks into a 5 foot 5 big titty Asian. Hit me. Hypocrites. I hate hypocrites. And there is nothing more hypocritical than claiming to follow the teachings of Jesus while denying people health care coverage. So here's my 13th favorite vid. Who would Jesus vote for? Help me, Jesus. Bless him, my child. What is it you need? I'm very sick and I need help. I understand. How much money do you have? What? I don't have any money. Ooh, that's unfortunate. But wait, I thought you'd help. I help those who help themselves. But you're Jesus. Oh, see, so you're thinking of liberal Jesus. I'm Republican Jesus. Republican Jesus? Yeah, it's like regular Jesus, except I'm not a f queer. Jesus isn't gay. Hangs out with 12 men, drinks wine, wears sandals. Yeah, sounds pretty gay to me. How are you any different? Hey, I'm smashing tons of biddies, okay? And when you're famous, they just let you do it. Sometimes I don't even ask for permission. I just grab them by the p and say, I'll be your messiah tonight. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Why? You're not a homo, right? No, but... Good. To be honest, I really hate those people. I'm glad I made their hole smelly. Jesus, I need medication or I'm gonna die. There's some things more important than your medication. Like what? Corporate profits. But it says to help poor people in the Bible. Where? Deuteronomy 1511. You shall open wide your hand to your brother, to your needy, and to the poor in your land. You see, by opening your hand, they meant give him the bird. Uh 
Okay, then what about Proverbs 22.16? Whoever oppresses the poor to increase his wealth or gives to the rich will only come to poverty. Yeah, it says gives to the rich and you'll come to poverty. So giving to a wealthy person will make them come to poverty. Jesus. Hey, I don't judge kinks. Okay, I do, but not this one. So you don't help people at all? What are you talking about? I help people all the time. Like who? Uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, um, Elon Musk, uh, some Jewish guy. What do they need? Oh, they prayed to stop paying federal taxes. What? They're rich. Why? Why should they have to pay for Medicare and Medicaid? So I can have medicine. Oh, my dad, relax. You're acting like I haven't done anything for you before. What have you done for me? Uh, what about those panic buttons I had installed at your school? The ones to alert for a school shooter? Yeah, those. Speaking of school shootings, though, someone should really do something about that. You! You should do something about that. Like what? Turn all semi-automatic weapons into Marlowe? Yes. Hey, if guns were around in my time, you bet your sweet candy ass I'd be wielding one. What was that, Judas? You want to come over for dinner? Kablammo! Okay, so to recap, you only help people who have money. And people the same race as me. You know. White. I thought you were Middle Eastern. I am. So how are you white? You're saying that white people can't be Middle Eastern? Psh, that's pretty racist of you. Ah! An Afghan hound! <laughs> Jesus, you killed him. He was coming after me. He was sniffing you. Probably sizing me up to either rob me or take my freedom. I thought thou shall not kill. Yeah, well, unless you feel threatened, then smite away. Is it because he was an Afghan hound? I'm sorry, is it winter time? Because all I see is a fucking snowflake. It's not my fault he was from a whole country. He probably was a terrorist, if anything. You should be thanking me. Okay, if you're not going to help me, then what about your dad? Oh, you're talking about the guy that watched his own son get whipped, beaten, and tortured in order to save mankind when he could have just sent out a fucking memo? That's the guy? You want to ask for help? Oh, okay, fine, fine, fine. Let me just give him a call. Hey, Dad? Oh, me, damn it. What is it? What are you doing? Angel dust. Oh, right. Uh, listen, there's a sick dog here that keeps begging me for help. He's not a black lab, is he? No. Mexican chihuahua? No, he, he's, he's got a lot of white on him. Uh, listen, he's asking for medical care. You asked him for money, right? Of course, but he says he doesn't have any money. Tell him freeloaders are the devil. Well, I did, but he keeps nagging me saying he's suffering. Tell him to pull himself up by his bootstraps. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> Excuse me? What the hell, God? You're seriously not going to help one of your sick and needy children? First off, you're a stepchild with anything. Or like an inbred cousin we don't invite to Thanksgiving. Secondly, you can't talk to me like that. You're not doing anything for me anyway. Oh, okay. You want to talk shit to me? Hey, Jesus. Yeah, Dad? I want you to slash his food stamps, Medicare, Social Security, and like a like, like, a, like a tiny bit of his penis. Oh, I've been done that. Well, my work here is done. Got out, bitches. <sighs> okay, okay. Well, what, what about the devil? Is he around? Of course. You see him all the time in the news. Who? AOC. A congresswoman? Congress demon. Okay, he gets really upset when you assume his gender. How is AOC the devil? Hello? Who laughs like this? That's right, a demon. That looked doctored. Fake news. All right, well, if that's all you needed, then my work here is done. Hey, Jesus? Yeah? F you. Oh, that's real childish. Did you say child? Oh, my God. F***ing relax, Jeff. I said childish. <laughs> oh, Dad, damn it. I told that guy to stop sneaking up on me. I've always been fascinated by the size of the universe, the scale of which barely computes in our simple monkey brain. Do you know there are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all the Earth's beaches? Like, what? And most stars have at least one planet orbiting them, meaning the chances of life existing somewhere out there are astronomically high. That being said, let me show you my 12th favorite vid, Have You Ever Been Abducted? Aliens are real. And no, I'm not talking about the tan kind DeSantis hates. I'm talking about creatures outside of our world. Recently, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast, mostly because that's where I get all my medical advice, when Joe had on a guest named James Fox, a UFO investigator and documentary filmmaker. James talked about many mysterious stories, ranging from a couple that saw a UFO to a guy that drove a dead alien around in his truck. And after all these extraordinary stories, what I realized is James is an idiot. You see, James has what I like to call simple monkey brain, where he makes arguments out of ignorance. For example, whenever James sees a UFO, UAP, or quite frankly, a WAP, he would say, I don't know what that is, therefore, it must be extraterrestrials from another galaxy. Really think about that sentence for a minute. He first says, I don't know what this is, then follows it up with, it must be aliens. Like, bro, once you admit you don't know what the fuck it is, that's where the conversation should stop. And you don't need to know any of James' stories to know that they're all probably bullshit. Let's take UFO crash landings. Dude, why are UFOs always crash landing? They can traverse across galaxies, traveling near the speed of light, yet they can't parallel park? Why do we always get the Asian aliens who don't know how to drive? And what are they even doing here? They must know we have devices that can take pictures and videos, and yet they're always posing their ship like some insta-thought thirsty for likes. Oh my god, is that a camera? No, I don't want any attention. If they want to gather information, then they wouldn't even need to get that close. Just telescope us from Pluto being like, damn, they really like using all their holes. While on the topic of holes, alien abductions are also 
also nonsense. These people are probably reliving childhood trauma from when their uncle in a gray sweater bediddled them during Thanksgiving. Turkey's ready, Billy. And even if a random alien wanted to slap your titties, you would never know. They just blow dart your neck as you wake up the next day like, why are my nipples erect? And what is Florbus was here? Seriously, every freaking story is, I remember being awake on a table as Baby Yoda poked at my poop shoot. Like an advanced creature capable of hyperspace technology can't use a simple tranquilizer? Are you serious? And why do aliens always look exactly like us? With all the evolutionary traits we can see on our planet, somehow a biped with wrists is the dominant creature in their galaxy as well. What a coincidence! It's almost like our simple monkey brain is only capable of thinking of us as the highest form of intelligence. And why are they always so weak and feeble? They're basically a great preteen going through chemo. And if they're not going to do some crunches, then where are their weapons? They see we have electricity, meaning we probably have some sweet missiles, and yet they didn't come strapped? Every alien should be packing not only a death ray, but also a rape ray, where you immediately start raping everything in front of you. A rock, a car, your nephew. I'm so sorry, Billy. And why is every alien such an idiot? Think about it. They're always crash landing, don't bring any weapons, can't even blow dart somebody correctly. Maybe we're just getting all the rejects. Basically the inbreds of their galaxy. Get out of here, Florbus, you f***ing idiot. Go crash land on some other planet, you nerf herder. Listen, I get it. Everybody wants to know the answer. I'm the guy that saw aliens, who got abducted, who felt Baby Yoda's finger. I'm the guy. I'm not some nobody. I'm special. I'm the guy that broke the biggest story of mankind. I mean, should the first three chapters of history books be dedicated to me? Maybe. But that's for future generations to decide. But the statue is non-negotiable. So aliens aren't real? Oh no, they're probably real. I mean, think about it. Our smartest person, Albert Einstein, says he can't travel faster than the speed of light. And the closest galaxy to us is 25,000 light years away. So you might think, oh, it'll take an alien 25,000 years to reach us. But it's actually a minimum of 50,000. Because it'll take 25,000 years for light to reach their telescopes, and then another 25,000 years for them to reach us if they're traveling at the speed of light. So basically what I'm saying is, 50,000 years from now, I'd start freaking out. Get your gooey hands off me, you nutless monkey! When I was in college, my homie and I made a bucket list of 50 things to do before graduating. And not surprisingly, more than half of them were about smashing people. Which just goes to show how simple guys' brains are. So here's a list of 15 things on every guy's bucket list. Banging MILFs, getting rich, then banging more MILFs. Every guy has a list of things he wants to accomplish before he dies. So here's a list of 15 things on every guy's bucket list. Number one, f*** uh. some. Guy brains are very simple. Having f*** is the greatest thing that can happen to us in a day. And the only thing better than that is having f*** with two people. Losing your virginity is the day you become a man. Man. Smashing two people at once is the day you become a god. The only downside is your hand hurting after giving your friends too many high fives. Number two, commit a crime. Why do men like vigilantes so much? Simple, because they don't play by the rules. No one wants to be told what to do. What do you mean it's illegal to jizz in my friend's shampoo bottle? I just want to mix this old spice with my old spunk. Number three, bang a milf. We've all fantasized about our friend's hot mom getting stuck in a dryer and needing your help to get out. You see, every guy wants to sleep with an older woman. Older women don't play games, tend to have bigger tits, and have maxed out their dick sucking skills. Best of all, they're over ovaries are drier than a nature valley bar. So, you can raw dog with 50% less risk. That's a great batting average, boys. Number four, doing drugs with celebs. Any celeb would work. You could smoke pot with Snoop Dogg, or do coke with Demi Lovato, or take sleeping pills with Heath Ledger. Anything that gives you a great story to tell their family at their funeral. Number five, start a business as a star. There's no better side hustle than star. Getting your dick sucked and getting paid? <laughs> Talk about a good Tuesday. Only sheep work 9 to 5 in some office cubicle. Be a lion and find a way to have sex with that sheep for money. Number six, roadhead. Is it extremely dangerous to everyone else on the road? Of course. But that's what makes it so thrilling. Will you finish with a smile on your face or into a family of four? Well, it depends how much teeth she uses. Number seven, own property. And no, I'm not talking about your East African friend. I'm talking about a place you can call your own. A place you can blast music and hell helicopter without having people call the cops. Property gives you a sense of freedom, where you can plant your flag and say, this is mine. Number eight, own a dog. A dog is basically a Dyson vacuum for it's impossible to resist its cuteness. And a dog can improve all aspects of your life. They can keep you active, help you out when you're sad, and it's an expert in finding toys. Just whatever you do, don't get a dog from a shelter. Having a shelter dog is like inviting a prisoner over your house. Sure, maybe he's reformed, or maybe he mistakes your child for a wishbone. Number nine, smash a chick in a foreign country. Even if you don't speak the language, I assure you, nothing is more attractive in the Philippines than unzipping your pants and whipping out your fat citizenship. Best part is, there's no consequences. Good luck collecting child support when I'm two continents away. Number 10, make it rain. Could be in the literal sense of skeeting a whole bunch of money at a stripper, or just basically balling out. Like buying all your friends drinks, or releasing a dozen doves every time you walk in a room. Personally, I only make it hail, which is throwing a whole bunch of change at homeless people. Sure, it hurts, but they need the money. They're already eating ass for heroin, so being pelted with a bunch of dead presidents is considered a holiday. Merry Christmas, bitch. 
Oh, why are you like this? Number 11, smash in an empty movie theater. Everybody wants to smash in public. The fear of getting caught heightens the mood. But what public place can you smash without getting arrested? That's right, an empty movie theater. If a theater is empty 20 minutes into a movie, then that's basically God giving you the green light. I'm already rock hard watching Minions The Rise of Gru. Might as well show my girl this Twinkie's cream filling. Number 12, own an expensive watch. Once you have a little bit more money to spend, you need to buy a nice watch. Now, you may be saying, what's the difference between a $9,000 Rolex and a $30 Timex? Simple. Status. There's a reason Mariah Carey named her shoe collection F*** the Poor. It's because having expensive stuff gives you status in life. What's even the point of having nice things if you can't shove it in people's faces? Uh, which would you rather, having a nice watch or a heart transplant? Show the haters that you chose balling out, even in death. Number 13, save someone's life. Nothing more heroic than endangering your life in order to save someone else's. And if it works, you know what that means? That's right, good publicity. Which will definitely result in jobs. This is what they should use in army recruit videos. If you choose to serve our nation and protect our freedom, women will pretty much have to. Number 14, own your dream car. Women aren't into practical things like cargo pants or honesty. So you could brag how safe your Prius is, but the only thing you'll be folding the seats down for is your Nizuko body pillow. If you want to smash, then you need a sexy car. And sure, you have to squat down like an African guy taking a sh** just to get into it, but it's built for speed. Gonna be hard for her to keep her bra on when you're going 220. <laughs> Number 15, getting revenge on your enemies. We all know it's illegal to beat the shit out of them, but perfectly legal to send them a Snapchat of you motorboating their ex. Now, which one do you think is going to hurt them more, huh? <laughs> Bonus tip, if all else fails and you don't hit any of your dreams, then you can just live vicariously through your kids. Just download all your insecurities on them like some sort of shitty human USB drive. You failed at baseball, but your kid still has a chance of being drafted. They're probably going to hate it, but they're also desperate for your approval. So keep throwing fastballs at their head until they learn how to catch, Billy! So those are my tips on what every guy should do before they die. If I missed any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, there's no greater joy in life than helping people. Ah! Not the face! Not the face! When I started this channel, I really didn't know what topics I'd be talking about. I had a bunch of ideas written down, but every one of them was so random. And that's not how you get successful. No. You milk the same idea over and over till you make it big, then you can branch out. But I figured, let me just get some ideas out there and I'll, I'll eventually figure it out. So after a few months, I checked my analytics and it said almost everyone following me was male. So I'm like, hmm, what do men like fun bags? Okay, now what problem can I help them solve? How to touch them. So enjoy my 10th favorite vid, how to touch your first booby. Titties. Big fly. Poppy titties. Whether you're gay, straight, whatever Sam Smith is, everybody loves titties. But how do you get your mitts on a pair of fun bags? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you seven steps on how to touch your first booby. Step number one, hide your boner. You see, when you're young, you'll be getting a lot of NRBs or no reason boner, where you get rock hard even when you're not thinking of anything sexual. And you can't be walking around with a throbbing Dwayne the Cock Johnson. So how do you get rid of a stiffy? Well, you could think of your grandma rubbing mayonnaise on her inner thigh, but that's still going to take a minimum of 30 seconds, and you don't got that kind of time. So instead, you're just gonna have to use your pants. Just stick your beaver basher up through your waistband and choke that shit like it's Epstein in a prison cell. Step number two, try not to be creepy. When you're horny, it's like there's a cloud in your brain and you don't think correctly. As Robin Williams once said, God gave man a piece and a brain, but unfortunately not enough blood flow to run them both at the same time. So try your absolute hardest not to look at their tits. You see, boobs are like the sun. You can only stare at them directly for a few seconds, but if you put on sunglasses, you can stare at them as much as you want. Step number three, wardrobe. Even if you look like post Malone's virgin cousin, a simple well-fitting outfit can make you look like a million bucks, maybe even a billion. And even if you're not up to date on the latest fashion trends, I got you covered with some simple go-tos. First, make sure your outfit fits correctly. Baggy shirt may feel comfortable, but it screams you got bigger tits than her. Next, get yourself a pair of white sneakers. Is white the dumbest color a sneaker could be? Of course. But women aren't into practical things like cargo pants or honesty. They're into fake things. And what's faker than pretending you need to use the bathroom just to scrub the puddle stains off your new kicks? Lastly, you need some accessories, whether it's a watch, sunglasses, lowercase t necklace, whatever. Something that makes you stand out in a crowd. Just whatever you do, don't buy designer clothes. Buying a Gucci belt is like saying GG's to your wallet. Step number four, approach girls. Easier said than done, I know. But at the end of the day, people always appreciate when you approach them. It shows confidence. You could sit around all day imagining what your life could be like together, or you could grow a pair and start a conversation. Easiest way is just to talk shit. Whether it's talking shit about your surroundings. Is that the new iPhone? Damn, those sweatshop kids work hard. They're 
their appearance, why do your shoes say k -k 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 all over them? Or talking shit about others? Do you think Mr. Murphy's a file? What? No. Then why did he write D on my paper and ask to see me after class? I think he's gonna try something. Step number five, tease. Women love to be teased, but don't go too hard in the paint. Making dead baby jokes right after the miscarriage might come off a little insensitive. Just start small. Like if she's wearing cowboy boots, give her the nickname cowgirl. Or if she says something sweet, call her sugar tits. Just try to make her feel comfortable. Then move the conversation to be more sexual related. Again, don't start with, what's your thoughts on tossing salad in the morning? Work the conversation there slowly. Then once you develop a rapport, it's time to move on to step six. Get them to a different location. This might be the most important step. You need to move from school friend or work friend to just friend. You see, friends can hang out anywhere. And it's a lot easier to make a move in the bleachers rather than on the field. Just try to be casual about it. You don't want it to seem like a date. Again, women don't want honesty. They want plausible deniability in case it doesn't go well. What? I just thought he was being nice walking me to my car. Okay, I guess we're kissing now. <laughs> Step number seven, initiate physical contact. And no, I'm not talking about a surprise titty grab. Do something cute like grabbing her hand while walking through a crowd or show off your fingering skills by having a thumb war. Once the physical barrier is broken, it'll make her feel more comfortable with you and increase the chances of intimacy. Uh, either that or she'll file sexual assault charges against you, ruining your reputation and any future job prospects. It's a gamble, I know, but remember, you're always one laugh away from either motorboating or being charged with groping. So those are my tips on how to honk your first pair of fun bags. Probably weren't the tips you were expecting, but they're the tips you deserve. And just remember, even if she says no, you still have options. Kidnapping? What? Uh, no. Uh, no. Paying for it. Make these bitches talk. Most men are programmed to want to pork as many women as possible. Even when I'm in a loving relationship, the thought of banging other chicks is always there. That's why guys think it's easier for girls to date when really we're just projecting our own goals on them. Thinking, oh, I want this, so they must too. So I hope you enjoy my ninth favorite vid, is dating easier for girls or guys? Is dating easier for men or for women? Neither. It's just different. Sure, it might be easier for a girl to get laid, but it's also way easier for them to get killed. And I take an occasional blue balls over fearing for my life. So instead of ranking which sex has it easier, let's talk about the positives each gender has while dating. Starting off with women and their first pro is makeup. Let's get this out of the way. Guys can totally wear makeup too, but it's just way more acceptable for girls to wear it in the daily life. And makeup can dramatically change your appearance. Take a look at this potato. Just a regular potato, right? Now take a look at it. Be honest, you kind of want to fuck that potato. Bring that potato home and get a good job some from your pops. Pro number two, options. Women have more available options. Not saying they're good options, but they just have more choices due to the social expectation of guys approaching girls rather than the other way around. Dating apps are the best example of this. According to Market Watch, the average match for a girl is 10%, while the average match for a guy is 0.6%. Not even a full fucking percent. Meaning the average dude has to swipe through 166 people just for the possibility of trading red lobster biscuits for a job. Both being extra salty. Pro number three, free meals. Everybody knows a guy pays for a first date. If a woman takes any money out of her purse, then you might as well rip up your condom, because the shower is the only time you're getting wet this evening. Is it fair? No. But good luck explaining a rational thought to an irrational creature. Pro number four. <sighs> One of the biggest reasons people date is so they can smash. And the only reason why you smash is to ah! not orgasm ah! while smashing is like making a sandwich and having someone slap it out of your hand. So the fact that women can have multiple ah! in one session is incredible. Dude, I'd fly halfway across the world just for one ah! For three, I'd fly to the moon. Get that baby Yoda. Ah! And lastly, the best pro women have while dating is respawn. You see, women have the power to load themselves into someone else's game, skipping most of the dating process altogether. So while you're building your best GTA mansion, you'll see player two has now joined. And guys, don't be jealous. If you could suck a d for a jet ski, then you'd already be on your knees looking like a snake during feeding time. All right, now let's talk about the pros for guys, starting off with bitch you ugly. One of the biggest advantages of being a guy is you don't have to be attractive in order to smash a dime piece. You could have a great personality, great sense of style, or just have some Pete Davison big d energy. You see, guys really only care about looks but a girl averages a multitude of factors when determining your f ability. This leads me to pro number two, money. If you have money, then nothing else matters. Money negates all negative aspects of your personality and appearance. You could be a narcissistic, daddy didn't love me, oompa loompa, who occasionally tries to overthrow democracy, but if you have enough money, you can still buy a dime piece. So if God did you dirty on the looks department, know that you can at least work your way up to smashing a 10. Pro number three, fear. Like I mentioned at the beginning, you have very little to fear while going on a date with someone. Unless you're dating some CrossFit chick on TRT, you don't have to worry about her kidnapping you. You know how many women are 
ass and murderers? Almost none. Worst case scenario is she keys your car or ruins your career by saying you choked her. Pro number four, age. You see, it might be hard to smash in your 20s, but once you reach 30s, it becomes way easier. You see, when a woman hits 30, their self-esteem plummets and what they're willing to settle for rises. Plus, by this point, you're usually doing better in your career, meaning you have more money. And to women, money is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Pro number five, decisions. Really, the best part about being a guy is that you get to make all the decisions. You want Japanese? Then take her out for hibachi. You want weekends free? Then pick her up on a Thursday. You want to make out while watching The Human Centipede? Then do it! Girls love it when a guy takes charge. And nothing says confidence like watching someone go ass to mouth as you tongue punch her fart box. So those are all the pros for guys and girls when it comes to dating. If I miss any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, if a KFC bucket can find love, you can too. It's no secret, most men are obsessed with the size of their Johnson. So I decided to help the homies out and talk about how to increase the size of your chunk. <laughs> Can you believe I got away with this? How do I increase the size of my junk, you may be asking yourself while clicking on this video? It's not that you have a small fire hose, no, it's like average. I just wanted to see if there's a clickbait, honestly. <clears throat> but let's be real, every guy wants their Johnson to be half an inch bigger. You could be 10 and a half and still be like, yeah, but 11 though. Now why is this? Why do we care about the size of our junk? Is it to please women? No, of course not. You may tell yourself it is, but it's not. If you cared about women, you'd make her come first. You see, it's not about pleasing women, it's about impressing men. You want other guys to know that you're a stallion. You might even be too big. But how big do you need to be? Well, the average vaginal canal is three to six inches long, and the G-spot is about two to three inches in. So you don't need a giant horse-like c*** in order to make women climax? Now, this is just an average. It doesn't account for women like Nicki Minaj that have what science refers to as deep dish pussy. I'm not even sure how she finds a chair big enough without Miss Pac-Manning it. The main reason you think your junk needs to be bigger is because of You're comparing yourself against genetic freaks. Is like the Olympics of 12 inches and lasting 45 minutes. Well, why are we giving Simone Biles medals when Johnny Sins clearly deserves it? And guys with huge p***s need p You think the average girl can fit a roll of paper towels in her mouth? No. Besides, like I mentioned earlier, the average vaginal canal is three to six inches long. You think having an extra 10 inches slam against her lungs feels good? Her cough isn't from the Rona, it's from that Bona. Now, it's not to say having a bigger piece doesn't have its advantages. For example, cowgirl is gonna be difficult if her max bounce height is only two inches, and it's the only way to make gray sweatpants attractive. Another benefit to big junk is it gives you leeway when you're not at full mast. You see, when you're a teenager, every boner is 100%, but the older you get, or the more whiskey you have, your junk will be more like 80% or below its max. So if you have a bigger schlong, then you don't have to be batting 100% to hit a home run. But luckily, medication like Viagra or Cialis have already solved this problem. Now, if you only care about optics, then the best tip I can give you is to shave your junk. It really does give the appearance that it's bigger. Besides, girls like it when a guy grooms himself. You think they want to run through a cornfield just to find the scarecrow? Mm -mm. Now, if you were born with a micro p or if the doctor's hand shook a little too much while snipping the tip, then there's still three options. Option one, kill yourself. Option two, toys. Technology has adapted to the point where we've determined the best vibration, angle, and depth to stimulate an Sure, everyone's different, but there's enough options to find something that would work best between you and your partner. Just start off slow, okay? You don't want to be jackhammering that night one. Option three, carpet munching. If you really want to please women, then it's time to improve your tongue game. There's a lot of good reference material out there. If you search how to eat puss on your favorite hub, you'll find a lot of great information. The way I learned was from watching a video called How to Eat Like a Champ. And I know it seems like I'm making a joke here, but I'm really not. That's the actual name of the video. And even though it's old, it has some excellent tips in it. The only problem is the video quality is like 144p, meaning it's visually hard to figure out if you're looking at a coochie or a ham sandwich. But the tips they give are literal gold. I promise you. I went from Down syndrome kid eating pudding to getting my head crushed like a watermelon. Overall, how important is size? Well, not as important as you think. There are still plenty of options for whatever size God made you in the assembly line. So try your absolute hardest to stop caring about what others think. And listen, if all else fails, just get a dog. That way, at least someone will make her wet in the bedroom. You know why I'm always making jokes about sensitive topics? Because humor helps us get over bad stuff. That's why so many comedians joke about death, because laughing is the way we cope. And to me, there's something beautiful about taking something that normally brings a negative thought and making it positive. So I hope you enjoyed my seventh favorite vid, Things You Can't Joke About. Are there things you can't joke about? No, of course not. There will always be people that get butt hurt over a joke. Recently, I made a mentally challenged joke and someone yelled at me saying, Hey, what if you had a kid that came out developmentally disabled? I said, how? 
dare you. Developmentally disabled is derogatory and hurtful. I prefer the term Pop-Tart. Now, if my kid was a Pop-Tart, I'd be so excited. I'd bring him to the store dressed as the Dark Knight as he's yelling, no, 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 Batman. He's knocking all the soups off the shelf, but you can't yell at him. If anything, someone will make a viral TikTok that shows how much of an awesome father I am. Uh, what I'm really saying is Pop-Tarts are a great tool in order to gain clout. It's like having a dog that wears pants. It's impossible to look away. And sure, there are some downsides, like he can't write his name without killing himself, and he can't take a piss without biting his tongue, but there are so many upsides. Think about how much easier it is to plan your day compared to a regular kid. You're never caught off guard with, Dad, come watch my soccer practice. Your kid's legs are deader than Heath Ledger in a hotel lobby. The only balls he's kicking are the ornaments on your Christmas tree. Having a Pop-Tart is like becoming rich. You can park in front of any store, get to skip the lines at Disney World, and when you're tired, you can have someone drive you around. Now, some people are going to get upset over your parenting skills, but just respond back with, hey, I don't tell you how to raise your toaster. If anything, they're jealous. They wish they could slap their kid in the face without having child protective services called on them, but they can't. Not my fault you were cursed with the normie. And don't let the liberal media convince you they deserve the same rights as people. There's a movie called I Am Sam, based off a true story where a mentally challenged fellow is trying to gain custody of a seven-year-old girl. Spoiler alert, he doesn't. And all I can think about while watching this is, how could you root for that guy? He's retarded and wants to be responsible for a child? What do you think would happen day one? Have a good day at school. Dad, this is the post office. See you later. I find that offensive is one of the dumbest phrases in the human language. Who am I even offending? The people aren't watching this video. They're too busy nibbling on their own hands. You know what offends me? The slogan autism speaks. No, it doesn't. Bleh. Is a noise, not a word. I could shake a bunch of maracas, but I'm not holding a conversation. And you know autism speaks is sponsored by Build-A-Bear? How is a child gonna hug a bear whose arms are crossed the entire time? And why do you never see any of them on TV? Every show has an idiot people find funny. The Office has Kevin, Parks and Rec has Andy, The Late Show with Jimmy Fallon has... Jimmy Fallon. People love to laugh at stupid people. That's why we should televise the Special Olympics. Gary is about to set a new high dive record at two feet. Let's see if he makes it. Well, it looks like Gary is drowning. Probably shouldn't have strapped himself into the chair first. Let's see if the lifeguard is able to save and she's been knocked unconscious. Well, at least Gary will die doing what he loved. Assaulting people trying to help him. And Pop-Tarts can be mean, too. I used to work at a psych center with this patient named Stacy that was always biting me. Sure, I would throw away all of her food, but that's because she never put out. Why else would I work the night shift if it wasn't a smash or toaster strudel? Her mouth was always wet. How could I say no? Besides, I was a virgin and just wanted my first time to be special. <sighs> what was I talking about again? Oh, that's right. Things you can't joke about. If you get upset over a joke, then that's on you. Your triggers are your responsibility. It isn't the world's obligation to tiptoe around you. I mean, at the end of the day, don't we all all wish we were more retarded. Knowing the finite nature of our existence is depressing. I feel like I'm just one can of paint away from living my life carefree. Butterfly pretty. Puberty is one of the most crucial aspects of one's life, and I have yet to find a good tutorial on it. So, I decided to make one of my own. Enjoy my sixth favorite vid, Seven Stages of Puberty. Puberty. The day your Johnson salutes you is the day your life changes forever. Gone are the thoughts of being an astronaut, as the only rocket you want to ride is the one going in your science teacher. But how do you deal with all the changes to your body? Well, here are seven tips on how to survive puberty. Tip number one, self-discovery. Puberty is like being a janitor on Epstein's Island, where every door you open is a shocking new discovery, mostly involving bodily fluids. So it's time to learn who you are. Are you a class clown or an overachiever? A social butterfly or an introvert? A trendsetter or a basic bit? Who are you? This is the time to experiment and try new things. Don't fall into the white boy trap of eat, fap, play Minecraft, repeat. If you don't like where things are going, change. Life is like Fortnite, where you can be whoever you want while having strangers call you F And don't wait around for someone or something to give you purpose. Your mom didn't want to have you, and God is too busy laughing at kids with cancer. So it's up to you to decide what your life's gonna be. Number two, physical. You're gonna start to experience many physical changes. Your voice will get deeper, you'll start to grow facial hair, and your skin will resemble a Little Caesars pizza. The only difference between acne and your pastor is acne waits till you're 13 to come on your face. This will also be the time you start getting taller, but if you don't make it over 5'7", know you got a few options. Option one, leg lengthening surgery, which is a real thing, you can look it up, where you can become up to five inches taller. And the procedure is real simple. All you do is break both femurs, <laughs> then no. drill into the thigh bone, creating a channel to put a metal rod in your leg, and then we just secure that by drilling in screws. <laughs> and option two, midget wrestling. Man, they almost look like real people. Number three, sex drive. Being horny is a lot like being hungry. 
The only difference is where you place the cucumber. And just like being hungry, you're not thinking clearly when you're not getting stuffed. That's why I recommend all guys pound one out before making an important decision. Give yourself a little post-not clarity before hitting on a girl with cold sores on her lip. And listen, everyone is going to make mistakes. Just remember, it's not a failure if you learn from it. Like the first time I kissed someone, I threw my tongue around like a Parkinson's kid trying to climb a ladder. But this taught me to be slow and gradual with my next kiss. And whatever you do, don't take sex advice from porn. Porn is like watching the circus going, oh, that's how you play with lions. Like, no, that's a professional. You're a rookie. So start with a slightly tamer kitty. Number four, personal hygiene. You used to be able to take showers once a week and spray a little Axe body spray on yourself and be good. Now, if you don't shower after gym practice, your balls will be like opening a jar of weed in the classroom. To make it simple, I have a patented shave trim touch strategy. You're going to want to shave your balls, your back, and that Anthony Davis eyebrow. You're going to want to trim your nose hairs, your beard, and those Wolverine claws. And you're going to want a touch of deodorant and cologne. Just remember, if you want to smash a kitty, make sure your balls are pretty. Number five, rebel. Part of going through puberty and becoming a teenager is rebelling against authority. Are you seriously going to let your parents tell you what to do? Your dad's a driver for FedEx and your mom had you in the back of a Beyonce concert. They're masters at making poor decisions. So be a risk taker and start telling everyone, no. Homework? No. Traffic laws? No. Inevitable early death? No. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Be a master of your domain and stroke your large ego in front of them. Not breaking eye contact, only getting faster and faster. Number six, mood swings. Puberty is an emotional roller coaster. One moment you'll be happy, the next you'll be, I will stab you in the throat! This is due to changing hormone levels causing mood swings. And it's important to reflect on situations you got emotional and think, what could I have done better? Like one day, you're going to find your friend's mom on OnlyFans, and this is where the true test begins. Is it funny? Yes. Do you want to show everyone? Of course. But if you're a really good friend, you'd keep it to yourself and donate $60. That way your friend gets that new game he was waiting for, and you get to play a game of your own. Number seven, peer pressure. Do it, no balls. Will be a phrase you hear a lot in your life, but it's important to weigh the pros and cons of any given situation. Puff, puff, pass, sure. Drink, drive, glass, ugh, not so much. Billy, no! And don't blame your friends for peer pressure. Blame your simple monkey brain. You see, the parts of your brain responsible for risk assessment and planning ahead are still developing. This is why teenagers are more likely to be involved in high-risk behavior, like drinking and driving or raw-dogging your second cousin. You just wanted your friends to think you're cool, and I get that. But if shit goes south, you'll be the one dealing with the consequences. Billy, aren't you happy you survived? <laughs> Bonus tip, and this might be the most crucial one of all, dating. You're going to start developing what science refers to as feelings. And with feelings will come crushes. And with crushes will come rejection. And if you get rejected, that's okay. Just try not to get into the mindset of, If I can't have you, no one can! Because that's not a place you want to be. Remember, you're not going to vibe with everyone. And there will always be other people out there willing to deep throat your gym dog. So those are all my tips on how to survive puberty. If I miss any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, puberty is like Asian parents where it's going to hit you no matter what. So many of us are in this social media shouting match of Look at me! That's why I feel bad for streamers. Because I only have to be interesting for four minutes. Well, they got to be entertaining for hours. And when you spend day after day stuck in front of a camera, you can't hide. Try being fun and engaging when your mom's in the hospital. You don't think your audience is going to see through your cheerful facade, dissecting every tone and facial expression to write that one negative comment that makes you want to snap. So I know being able to stream is a privilege, but let's not forget the person behind the screen is still a person. A person who deals with the same challenges and turmoil we all face in life. That being said, I hope you enjoy my fifth favorite vid, Smash Your Pass Streamer Edition. Welcome to Smash Your Pass, where I make inappropriate comments about women I never met and hope they never see it. Streamer Edition. Starting out with Pokimei, Pokimane. I've only seen Pokimane in two things. One, where she pretends to do cocaine. Are my lines good enough? I don't know if I'm good at this. And two, where she tweets this photo. This face makes more money than you'll ever see in your life. Now, both these things had me conflicted, because the cane thing makes me think she's willing to put dirty things in her body, but this tweet screams pretentious bit. Plus, this picture looks like she's one dry d away from having her meth for the evening. So, it's gonna be a pass for me. Next up, Amaranth. I'm pretty sure she has a learning disability. Like, every time I hear her speak, I'm half expecting her to start nibbling on her hands. Now, if you like to spank it to the Special Olympics, you do you. But I'd rather smash someone that can take a piss without biting their tongue. Pass. Speaking of retarded, Lily Pichu. Now, I've never heard her speak and know nothing about her, but come on. Look at this pic and tell me she's not one chromosome too heavy. So, it's gonna be a pass for me. Next up, Loser Fruit. Now, at first, she seems like your average cute gamer chick. But then I looked up her YouTube and she brought her boyfriend on stream. Like, bitch, what are you doing? You're not even top 200 in Fortnite. Simps only watch you because they think their tier 3 sub will get them a pity hand job at TwitchCon. So because of your poor business skills, it's gonna be a pass. Next up, Iron Mouse. What the waifu is that? 40-year-old pedos are really up their game. I'm over here
here thinking Mall Santa or Tickle Me Elmo cosplay is the best way to abduct kids, I never thought of playing off their hentai fantasies. It seems so simple now. Why waste your time joining a church and convincing 12-year-olds to take one for the Lord when you can just put Nizuko on a popsicle stick and have kids DM you their home address? I appreciate your craftiness, Iron Mouse, but all pedos should be hung at the gallows, so it's gonna be a pass from me. Next up, Kitty Plays. Well, not into trans people, so it's gonna be a pass. And don't give me that she was born a woman garbage. Look at that chin. That's a man's chin. I I'm sorry. Was a man's chin. Pass. Next up, Imaru? E e Imaru? I tried watching one of her YouTube videos, and I couldn't make it past the intro. Thank you. What the fuck is up with that heart? That's horrible. Ignoring the fact it's super easy to make a heart with your hands, you couldn't do another take? You went with the one where you're fucking it up in the beginning? But my imperfections make me quirky. No, they make you lazy and a failure. Hard pass. Next up, Loy ah, uh, Loy ya. Uh? Let's look up her YouTube channel and under 10,000 views. Woo! This girl's in my league. Ah, oh, but she's a redhead. Ew. It's nothing against them, but they don't have a soul and they're not getting into heaven, so sorry, girl. It's gonna be a pass. Next up, Valkyrie. Now, sure, her voice sounds like a baby being circumcised. <laughs> This joke I've ever said. Oh, sorry, let me start over. Let me start over. Now, sure, her voice sounds like a baby being circumcised, but you gotta respect her passion. Like, she doesn't half-ass anything. She goes hard all the time. Like, she reminds me of someone that'll grab your d being like, we're doing this. Power bottom activated. Easy smash. Next up, it's Shefu. I can't tell if she looks like every other Korean girl or if I'm racist. Wait, let's test this. Editor, put 10 other Koreans on screen. And she's gone. You know what? I'm still gonna smash. Because of all the PC white people I know, Asians just seem exotic. Next up, Let's watch a video of this girl. We need half a tablespoon of lemon zest. Cream cheese, six ounces. That's one, two. Is this bitch literally just making cookies on camera for content? God, I hate these talentless bitches. See, I respect women whoring themselves out for money. Like Autism Speaks Amareth, showing off everything but a nip for subs. But bro, someone just baking cookies? No intro, no quips, just some bitch being like, Hey, you guys want to see me iron some laundry? No! Hard pass. Next up, just a minx. Let's see what she looks like. Oh, f*** no. Purple hair is a massive red flag. And I should know, I did a video on the biggest red flags. Girls with vibrant hair colors are one daddy issue away from keying your car. So, it's gonna be a pass. Next up, Cutie Cinderella. Proven you can blow your way to the top. Now, I'm sure she'd get real butt hurt saying, I worked really hard to get where I am and has nothing to do with who I'm sleeping with. Which we all know is bullshit, right? Like, she could be the most talented streamer, but porking the biggest streamer on the planet didn't help a little? Really? If I was giving out hand to Elon Musk for shoutouts on Twitter, do you not think I'd be a little more successful? And how are you gonna get angry when someone spanked it to deepfakes of you? Like, girl, deepfake videos are like Demi Lovato overdosing. It's inevitable. So stop kidding shaming me when I put on VR goggles and spank it to the face of Margot Robbie on the body of Elastigirl. Next up, Botez Live. Wow, she's banging. But ew, she's really good at chess. Oh, that's gonna be a deal breaker. How am I gonna slowly tear down your self-esteem till you start feeling so worthless that you think I'm the best you can do if you're smart? It's not possible. I need a broken girl who accepts emotional abuse because she feels like she deserves it. I have an extremely fragile male ego with unresolved insecurities and don't need some smart chick diagnosing me because in my mind, accepting help from anyone is a sign of weakness. So until she huffs some paint and lets me gaslight her, it's gonna be a pass for me. And lastly, we have Sweet Anita, a streamer with actual Tourette's. I play Bioshock. I play with my dick on a Tuesday. Fuck you and Jesus. Fuck you. I don't fuck biscuits. I fuck the queen. I've said the n-word as a tick occasionally, but it doesn't really come on my radar. It doesn't come on my tits either. Fuck you. So thank you ever so much to everyone who touched my cunt and fisted my kitten. I will fuck your friends, mate. So to recap, she's cute, funny, and damaged? Boys, I think we got a winner. All right, that, that feels like enough streamers for today. And to everyone watching this, please don't tweet this video out to all the streamers on this list. Most of them are busy making talentless reacting videos. They don't have time to watch anything with some substance. Besides, I wouldn't want to offend anyone on my channel offending everybody. One of the worst aspects about COVID is it basically gave people social anxiety. It's like we all forgot how to talk to one another. And it's important to remember human connections make life worth living. Who isn't happy laughing with friends, getting complimented by strangers, or hugging somebody you care about? You may enjoy your alone time, but it's the time you spend with others that's the most memorable. So if you struggle with social situations, then hopefully enjoy my fourth favorite vid, How to Beat Your Social Anxiety. Ew, get away from me. You're doing it again. You're thinking about people judging you. But the only way to know if you're gross is by talking to them. So here are seven ways to fix your 
your social anxiety. Number one, stop caring about what others think. Part of your awkwardness is low self-esteem. People are going to judge me, or I'm not interesting, or people don't want to hear what I have to say. Take a look around. The world is filled with basic bitches. Holding the same iPhone, driving the same car, fapping to the same corn stars. Barely anyone is special, knows who are, nibble on their own hands. Best example of someone who doesn't give a fuck is Jeff Dunham. He's one of the most successful comedians in the world, and the dude plays with puppets. Puppets! Like, how did they not get bullied out of him? <gasps> what if he got bediddled into him? Billy doesn't like to be touched there. Oh, look. It's raining. Point is, don't let some incel who's never done anything with their life dictate how you should live yours. Number two, put down your phone. The attention span of children nowadays is that of a squirrel with Parkinson's. Mindlessly scrolling through TikTok just trying to get that dopamine nut. But when you're on your phone all the time, you miss the world around you. That cougar dropping her wallet on the subway was your opportunity. Too bad you were looking down trying to delete mom's near area pop up. Now listen, I get it. When you're in public, you get nervous and do what brings you comfort. Watching jailbait teens tease everything but a nip on TikTok. But if you want to feel a titty, then you gotta approach a bitty. And sometimes Sometimes a simple smile or eye contact is all you need. So fight the urge to look down and throw out a smile big enough to get noticed, but small enough not to get maced. Number three, fix your appearance. The quickest way to gain some self-confidence is by altering your appearance. My recommendation is to get jacked. Give anyone that makes fun of your stutter some instant karma. How does it feel? And I know getting ripped is hard work, but there are some shortcuts. All you need is protein powder, self-loathing, and gorilla splooge. How are you gonna get gorilla splooge? Simple. Carefully. <laughs> Number four, fake it till you make it. Instagram thoughts are masters of this. Posting pictures of them looking like a mermaid on a beach, but she really looks like a walrus. But even though they're not naturally beautiful, they're still achieving their goal of making preteen girls hate themselves. You see, you don't need to be born with godlike genetics to be successful. So be like Jonathan Majors breaking up that fight and pretend. Pretend you're interesting. Pretend you're charming. Pretend you're not a middle of the road white boy with no discernible talents. Because confidence is just a delusion that you're better than others. And which would you rather live in? A fantasy or reality? Number five, beat your weak. Right now, I'm taking salsa classes. Why? Because I'm tired of losing to every Walmart greeter on the dance floor. My charisma's at max, but as soon as dancing's involved, I turn into an awkward penguin, just waddling back and forth. So after seeing beta after beta crush me on the dance floor, I decided to get a little help. Which is the biggest issue most of you have. Admitting when you're not good at something and seeking help. No one is perfect. We all have things we can learn from one another. So push aside your fragile ego and start thrusting self-improvement. Number six, know you're the man. The easiest way to start a conversation is just by complimenting someone. A simple, cool jacket or nice kicks or your stomach doesn't even look like you had a miscarriage is a great way to break the ice. You see, compliments are like giving handies to your self-esteem, just spanking away all those negative thoughts. So if you want people to open up, you gotta start by lubing them up. Just keep in mind cultural differences. Like you to bomb is a compliment in America, but an argument in the Middle East. Number seven, learn to laugh at yourself. Having some humility is a good thing. And no one knows this better than the developmentally disabled, or as I like to call them, Pop-Tarts. I made a video a while back called Things You Can't Joke About, and they're always commenting how it's important to laugh at yourself. Which is impressive, because how are they typing when their hand always looks like they're holding a c You see, if they can laugh at themselves, you can too. Because when you do, you take the power away from words. We all know mental warfare is worse than physical, so learning to laugh off any insult is something we can all get better at. Isn't that right, Billy? Oh, yeah. Just keep typing. Number eight, stop giving a poop. There is no guarantee there will be a tomorrow. Every day I see people looking down at their phones while driving. I'm like, damn yo, I am one breakup text away from going over this bridge. And having some horned up teen almost send me into another dimension really puts things into perspective. Like what am I doing with my life? Why do I need validation from anyone? Cause that's all social anxiety is, caring about the opinions of others. So let's all stop giving a poop. Because if you don't, you're not getting into heaven. So those are my tips on how to fix your social anxiety. If I missed any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember. You know, ever since I graduated college, I really haven't gotten that much smarter. But I've gotten significantly wiser. And with wisdom comes perspective. So this next bit is important to me because it's all the mistakes I've made. I used to get real butt hurt when someone criticized me or thought success was determined by how much money you have or just had a hard time admitting when I was wrong. But one of the most important lessons I've learned in life is it's not a failure if you learn from it. So I hope you enjoy my third favorite vid, how to upgrade your male brain. You're an idiot, but it's not your fault. You were born with a simple monkey brain that only sees thirsty thoughts. But what can you do about your meat vegetable? Well, here are five ways to upgrade your brain. Number one, handling criticism. No matter how successful you are, we're all impacted by criticism. I'll give you an example. I was listening to the Conan O'Brien podcast and he had on Nirvana. Well, most are Nirvana. He didn't wheel out Kurt Cobain's corpse with a shotgun still in hand. Anyway, they were celebrating their 20th anniversary of their hit album, In Utero. At one point, they mentioned a negative review written about them after one of their first concerts. Really think about that for a sec. One of the most successful bands ever to exist has criticism living rent-free in their head for 20 years. 
years. So it doesn't matter who you are, negative comments can hurt everyone. Well, everyone except me. You can make watching offending everybody till I laugh and sit there motionless like Kurt Cobain's corpse, but I'd still be like, come on, man. That sugar video was pretty good. Number two, body count is pointless. Smashing women is the ultimate currency to a young male. Nothing screams I'm the alpha like more notches on your belt, right? Wrong. Quantity doesn't mean quality. Which would you rather slay? Ten dragons or one princess? Yeah, I take the dime piece every time. So stop caring about numbers. Just because you're willing to let any busted clown play with your skin flute doesn't make you more of a man. Besides, every guy just lies about their number anyway. Will Chamberlain claimed to have slept with 20,000 women during his career, which if you crunch the numbers comes out to 1.4 women every day. Which is ridiculous. How often was a circus in town for you to find 0.4 of a woman? If anything, you should value consistency. That's why I love having a girlfriend I can smash on the regs. But that only counts as one. Okay, have fun telling you blue balls that. You know, the biggest issue I have with body count isn't the pissing contest guys play of I've more swag than you. It's when you associate a number with status, you begin to dehumanize women. Because now every chick is just a number, barely even a person. They don't have their own feelings, thoughts and personality? No. They're basically just a blow-up doll who occasionally gets headaches. Probably from skull f***ing her. Number three, success doesn't equal happiness. Take a look at Dwayne the Cock Johnson. Biggest movie star in the world, massive car collection, gorgeous, roided up body. From the outside, it appears he has everything, but we're just assuming. What if he's going through a messy divorce? Or what if his kids are using hard drugs? Or what if she's transitioning to pebbles? The point is, you can't look at someone's success and assume where their head's at, because all we see is the victories, not the struggles. Sure, being rich gives you more opportunity to be happy, but it doesn't magically create it. Sometimes happiness is a state of mind. Like a few years ago, my grandma passed away from HIV, but even in her final days, she always found a way to remain positive. Almost as positive as her HIV. And after she was gone, I was walking through her place when I stumbled upon a photo album. Inside was a picture of a small African child I named Magumbo. Magumbo had no shoes or socks on and was standing in pure poverty, yet had the biggest smile on his face. You know those infectious smiles that makes you want to smile yourself? And I'm just thinking, wow, this kid has a fraction of what I have and still found a way to be happy. Like he doesn't have indoor AC or a PS5 or a phone he can view African titties on, and yet he still found a way to be joyful. So anytime the world brings you down, I want you to think about Gumbo and pound one out for him. Oh, here's to you, buddy. Number four, men are monsters. We all have horrible thoughts, and just like Drake being attracted to kids, we just can't help it. Like, how many times have you thought about committing homicide when someone cuts you off? Not today, bitch. I can't even stand on a subway platform without saying, it'd be so easy. Now, I'm not saying all guys are terrible people, but we all have terrible thoughts. Like, recently, I invited my friend's younger brother to go see Bill Burr at Madison Square Garden, thinking, oh, he's never been to a comedy show before. How nice would it be to take him to see one of the all-time greats? So on the way there, he tells me his parents are tracking his location. And I'm like, really, bro? I've known you and your family for over 10 years, and they still don't trust me? Then I was like, wait, you know what we should do? We should stop at a Hilton and throw your phone in a bush. He's like, why? I'm like, because imagine your parents see that I drove directly from your house to a hotel. <laughs> Have them think the only highway we're driving on is the Hershey Highway. The point is, there's nothing wrong with having terrible thoughts. Just try not to act on them. Number five, admit when you're wrong. One time my friend posted a picture of a disabled girl, and I decided to comment, I'm downs with this picture. Turns out the girl was his sister who recently passed away. I'm like, boy, now I feel like the idiot. So instead of doubling downs, I apologized. Because that is the wrong crowd for that joke. Like, if I mention Pop-Tarts on my channel, I get praised. I guess one man's trash is another man's treasure. However, I haven't always been this way. When I was 17, my girlfriend broke up with me, and I got so angry. I'm talking taken level of anger here. And the craziest part was, my ex did nothing wrong. It was my own fragile ego that couldn't handle the rejection. Which is wild. I literally convinced myself that my own shortcomings were a result of another person. So sometimes we should reflect on our actions and say to ourselves, am I wrong here? But then again, sometimes wrong feels so right. So those are five ways to upgrade your brain. If I missed any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, anything can be funny. Well, everything except abortion jokes, which by definition have no delivery. This brings us to the top two. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you my second favorite vid, as YouTube apparently didn't see the satire in it. However, you can watch it, along with my other two hot for YouTube videos, on my Patreon. And any tier you sign up for grants you access to a private Discord server where you can share all your please end me memes. Seriously, your support really does help the channel and allows me to continue making... Uh, risky content, I guess is a good way to put it. Anyway, this next vid is real important to me, as it's something I've struggled with my entire life. Sugar.
Sugar is one of the most addictive substances on the planet, and just like kicking a homeless person, once you start, you just can't stop. But what is sugar? Sugar is when a glucose molecule decides to stick it in a fructose molecule, causing it to have a butt baby of sucrose. Sucrose is a simple carbohydrate, not to be confused with complex carbohydrates. You see, most people would typically group all carbs together, when they're really quite different. Simple carbs are like basic bitties. They'll give you a quick dopamine rush, and then immediately ask for a handbag. Complex carbs are like your friend's stepmom. They won't be quick, but you'd be surprised at how long they last. Sugar comes from sugar cane or sugar beets, and was originally brought to America by Christopher Columbus. Columbus, that white devil, thought, hmm, I have the sugar cane, but no slaves to grow it for me. What to do? I got it. Grow it for me, boy. And boy did he. Those slaves were used to cultivate sugar, which turned into rum, which turned into money, which turned into more slaves, which turned into, you guessed it, more sugar. And over the next couple hundred years, people realized they could add sugar to things like coffee, tea, and chocolate to make it taste better, which led to the first advertisement of Folgers. Mmm, taste the suffering. Eventually, research started to come out linking sugar to adverse health effects, but getting rid of it would affect a lot of companies' bottom line. So in the 1960s, some shady people paid Harvard scientists to downplay the link of sugar to heart disease and blame it on fat instead. That way, companies could still make massive profits and more people would die. It's really a win-win if you're a capitalist like me. But in 1972, some British scientist named John Utkin decided to grow a conscience and sound the alarm that sugar, not fat, was the greater danger to our health. The food industry responded appropriately by destroying Utkin's reputation and getting his work banned, which just goes to show the free market always works. However, eventually more research came out linking sugar to an increased risk of cancer, cavities, diabetes, obesity, basically anything that makes a person unfuckable. But by this point, the damage is already done. In America, 70% of adults are overweight and 40% are obese. I don't even know how planes can get off the ground with so many pork chops out there. Guess pigs can fly. Now, in fairness, sugar isn't all bad. Your body wants about a fifth of its calories from glucose, so it's not surprising that your brain craves it. The problem is how much sugar you ingest. Like the average male only supposed to consume about 36 grams in a day. Like, bish, that's less than one can of Pepsi. That's for the day, let alone any other meal your fat ass is gonna scarf down. And you might think, oh, well, the answer is simple. I just won't eat candy or drink soda. But spoiler alert, sugar is in almost everything. Peanut butter, tomato sauce, f***ing Advil has sugar in it. And just like your pastor, companies know to get you while you're young. Breakfast cereals like Cheerios are 32% sugar. Lucky Charms, 33%. Quaker Oats, oh, it has oats in it. How bad could that be? 44% sugar. How can you sell something almost 50% sugar to children and not expect some health problems? That's like bringing crystal meth cupcakes to the church bake sale being like, why are so many kids tweaking? You see, there are only about 10 companies that own all the food and drinks in the world. And not surprisingly, the sweeter something tastes, the more likely someone will buy it. My mom fell victim to this and would always buy me things high in sugar. In her mind, she was just being a good parent, not realizing she's napalming my palate. I couldn't even drink water without getting repulsed. And being a dumb kid, I didn't think I was addicted. I was just like, oh, my taste buds must be different. You like water and broccoli, I like Skittles and Pixie Sticks. We were just built different. The only time I was like, wait, something may be wrong, was when I was chilling at my homie's house. We were in the basement practicing wrestling moves on each other. You know, typical heterosexual behavior. Anyway, we eventually both get exhausted and head upstairs for some refreshments. Normally, not I'd grab a soda, but my friend only had cranberry juice and water. So I just started chugging cranberry juice, which is wild because I find it disgusting. Like even though I didn't like the taste, my body knew there was something in this that I desired. Fast forward to college and your boy was taking a nutrition class where my teacher is like, sugar will f*** you worse than your pastor. I'm paraphrasing, but the gist was this stuff is really bad for you. So I decided to cut it out, but still crave something sweet. So what I did was transfer to crystal light, or basically fake sugar, and would slowly wean myself off of it by adding less and less to my drinks, eventually getting me used to the taste of water without being disgusted. But even after this, I still didn't think I was addicted to sugar. That was until I came home from Thanksgiving break and went out to dinner with my mom. At dinner, I decided to have a huge glass of soda, and four hours later, I had a massive craving for it. So much so, I'm like, maybe I'll just drive to CVS to pick some up. Then I'm like, bro, what is wrong with me? It's 10 at night. Why do I feel compelled to get a soda right now? And this feeling lasted for days. Like I'd be passing by a 7-Eleven, like, what if, what if I just stopped in real quick? Ah, no, you crack it. Stop it. Stop it. This is the first of many occasions occasions where my body would go through long stretches without sugar, eat or drink a ton of it, then go back to having withdrawals, which kind of put other addictions in perspective. Like, I definitely used to make fun of alcoholics, like, oh, not drinking 12 shots of Jaeger must be so difficult. Please, tell me about your disease. But my insults were based on ignorance, because I don't have the addiction gene like many others do. Right now, I have pain and sleeping pills in my medicine cabinet, yet I don't have a desire to do them. Sure, they make me feel good, but like women getting laid, I just don't have the craving for it. So much in life is about luck. Like, I'm sure LeBron James has worked super hard to get 
where he's at, but if he was born 150 years earlier, the only free throw he'd be shooting is cotton in his master's bag. So don't feel bad if sugar or other substances have a certain amount of control over your life. Because maybe you're surrounded by fast food, or maybe you have a slow metabolism, or maybe the only way you get hard is by smelling a Krispy Kreme. I don't know you or the struggles you go through, but if you need some help quitting sugar, I do got some tips for you. Tip number one, hate yourself. When you love yourself, you start to let yourself go. That's why fat black women are so happy. Is that what you want? To love yourself? Ew. No. Self-loathing is the first step to having a fit physique. And the more disgusted you are, the less likely you are to eat that bag of Skittles. Tip number two, learn how to read food labels. Starch, fruit juice, honey, and anything ending in os is basically sugar in disguise. And don't be fooled by corporate buzzwords. Just because the package says vegan and gluten-free or natural doesn't mean it's good for you. And the biggest thing to look for is added sugar. That's basically a company saying, you don't want to make this yogurt taste better? Some crack. Tip number three, go cold turkey. It's a lot easier to never do something than to do something in moderation. Think of eating healthy like getting a handy. If you're just getting handies, it's fine. But as soon as you get that one blowy or drink that one soda, it's off the rails. Like, this is great. Why would I ever go back to getting handies or not having sugar or whatever this analogy is about? The point is, if you never have something delicious, then you won't know what you're missing. Tip number four, replace. Like I mentioned earlier, the way I weaned myself off soda was drinking Crystal Light. Now, that's not to say these fake sugars are good for you. It's like smoking and driving instead of drinking and driving. Sure, one is better, but that doesn't mean the other one's good. One issue I have with these fake sugars is how much sweeter they are than sugar. Aspartame is 200 times sweeter, and sucralose, or Splenda, is 600 times sweeter. This causes some people, like myself, to start to crave that sweet feeling. Like recently, I brought this drink called Body Armor Light. It has 20 calories, some vitamins, and almost no sugar. So I'm thinking, oh, this has got to be good for me. But after drinking one, my body two hours later is like, more, I want more. So these sugar alternatives may be good for some, but they're not for everyone. Tip number five, seek help. Some people, especially guys, view asking for help as a sign of weakness. But really, it's a sign of maturity. It's using the tools and resources around you to help solve your problems. Because what works for you may not work for others. Like a friend of mine lost a ton of weight and credits me for insulting him as the main motivator. But calling someone chicken cutlet titties may not work for everyone. So it's best to seek out the guidance of a medical professional and come up with a plan that works best for you. Because sugar may not be your main issue. Like most addictions, it's about escaping your problems and turning to something that gives you comfort. So maybe sugar is just a coping mechanism for underlying trauma. Or maybe you just like the taste of bread. I don't know. But what I do know is heart disease is the number one killer in America. And if you think life sucks now, imagine losing your parent to a preventable disease. Yeah, talk about a bad day. Or a great day if you're trying to get an inheritance. The point is, if you care about your family, your loved ones, or yourself, then you should work on trying to curb your sugar addiction and live a healthier lifestyle. That video was a doozy. You know, I always get people being like, why don't you make longer YouTube videos? And I'm like, bro, you think animations are cheap? It's expensive. Plus, I like getting into the juice immediately. You ever watch a video that's like 10 ways to jerk off a banana and you're like a minute and a half in the video and they still haven't gotten to the first tip? Oh, really grinds my gears. So that's why I like making short little dopamine trips that are chock full of jokes and ignorance. But big changes are coming to the channel soon. Woo! your boy's developing his own little offensive merch line and I'm gonna start experimenting with some IRL videos. So we're gonna see your face? Well, you're gonna see my body and my body is f***ing nice. Mmm, tasty. You know why? Because I gave up sugar. <laughs> That's right. Brought this puppy full circle. Mmm. I got you some McDonald's, Dad. Oh, Billy, that was really sweet of you. Shh, keep eating. Which brings us to number one. Now, the other vids on this list were hard to rank, but I always knew what number one was. So my favorite video I have ever created is, drumroll, what's heaven like? To me, this is the ultimate banger. It's inquisitive, it's funny, and it talks about a topic that gets people the most butt hurt: religion. Nothing triggers people like religion. You could say snow is caused by goat jizz and no one would bat an eye. But if you say there's no God, then people lose their minds, which is crazy when you think about it. In both, you're just stating your opinion, but one invokes a strong emotional reaction. And when people get emotional about something, they tend to close themselves off to opposing viewpoints. And I know my channel's called Defending Everybody, but it's not really my intention. It's to talk about taboo or sensitive topics and make you think about them in a different way. I am not some prophet standing on I'm always right mountain. I'm just a dude who's always asking questions about the world around him. And I'm willing to adapt and change my opinion based on new information. Because the only way to know if you're right about something is by hearing different perspectives. So whether you're religious or not, I hope you enjoy my number one favorite video, What's Heaven Like? What do you think heaven is like? Christians always talk about how great it is, but I just got so many questions like, is there food in heaven? It seems a little f***ed up to choke on a chicken wing, then go to heaven and see the same chicken that took you out. If there's no food, then do you have to poop or pee? Peeing I could do without, but dropping a log after a day of crafting is one of life's greatest joys. Speaking of the poop shoot, do gays get into heaven? The Bible says you can't lay with another man, but doesn't say anything about tossing a salad. Can you spy on living people? You always hear how your relatives are watching over you, but that sounds a little stalkerish. Like, I know we're related, Grandma, but I'm pissing. Get out. Do you have any impact over prayers? Like, if your nephew is praying Father Cunningham stops 
asking him, can you go to God and be like, come on, G-Man, do you mind answering this one? What if you wanted to hang out with someone? Like, can I play chess with Jesus? He's gotta be pretty popular. Does he just multiply himself so everyone can chill with him? Do you need to wear clothes in heaven, or does God just download no shame into you? I feel like I need at least boxers, or I'd just be helicoptering everywhere I walked. What if you remarried after your wife dies? She patiently waits five years for you to arrive, only to see you holding hands with another woman while floating the idea of a threesome. Can he have sex in heaven? Can he be with whoever you want? I mean, it's heaven, right? But if he can have sex with anyone, isn't that also a little rapey? Like, I'm not asking Margot Robbie for consent. I'm just putting on my Batman costume and smashing. If you can have sex with anyone, then can you have sex with fictional characters? What if I had a hard-on for Elastigirl? I hear she's pretty flexible. If you can have sex, then can you conceive a child? What if your kid has Down syndrome? Can you just Kobe it in the trash can and try again? Do babies that die get in? Is there like a nursery ward for them? Do they grow up, go to school, go through that awkward stage of puberty where they get boners all the time? What if you were a wonderful person your entire life, but always had the desire to f*** a child? You never did it because you knew it was wrong, but can you smash a child in heaven? Is there free will in heaven? Can I lie, tease someone, tell a dead baby joke that someone finds funny and another finds offensive? Can I pull a prank in heaven? What if my friend gets upset? Is there some sort of mediation where an angel has to come in and sort it out? Or do they just send me straight to hell? Like, sorry, you can't be jizzing in your friend's shampoo bottle. Wait, it was a joke. It was a joke! Can he get hurt in heaven? Physically, probably not, but what about psychological pain? Like, what if you ask your friend to go watch Passion of the Christ 2 A New Dawn, but he says he'd rather play Minecraft? Can you feel the sadness that he doesn't want to spend time with you? What if you were kidnapped and tortured for 20 years? Can he have PTSD in heaven? If the trauma was such a major part of your life, wouldn't it define who you are? So if God made that trauma disappear, wouldn't that drastically change your personality? Are there drugs in heaven? Can I smoke a joint with Jesus asking, is this the burning bush you were talking about? Do people with developmental disabilities get into heaven? What if you spent most of your life nibbling on your own hands? Are you all of a sudden smart? Do you have to groom yourself in heaven? Do my fingernails so grow? Does my skin get oily? Do I have to shave my balls or are they forever smooth like a marble countertop? If you don't have to groom, then can you change physical aspects about yourself? Can you shrink your pear beak of a nose or turn those bee stings into flotation devices? Does your vision get enhanced? What if you're blind? Do you go from seeing darkness to seeing the shame on your grandparents' face as you tell them you switch genders? Do you smell in heaven? Are there bad smells? Like the reason why chocolate smells so good is because I know what the Hershey Highway smells like. What age are you in heaven? Can you revert back to your prime where your knees didn't creak every time you stood up? Do you have to sleep in heaven or do you have energy all day? If you have to sleep, then do you dream? Be great to dream about your enemies in hell, taking pineapples to the taint. Is there entertainment in heaven? Does heaven have its own Netflix? Can you even watch shows that feature n or gore? How is it heaven if I can't watch the boys? Do other religions get into heaven? If they do, then it's gotta suck being a devout Buddhist and finding out you gave up riding jet skis for no reason. Does the internet exist in heaven? Did it only exist when we invented it on Earth, or has it always been there? Can you play fantasy football, Minecraft, look at celebrity feet pics? Is there an economy in heaven, where if you work hard, you get top shelf angel p What if you're big into collecting stuff, like Funko Pops or blow-up dolls? Does that stuff exist? Where's it come from? Is there currency to buy it? Does collecting stuff seem worth it if you could just magically make it appear with no effort? Are there aliens? Aliens in heaven, or just us? Do they have an alien Jesus who somehow is also white? How crowded is heaven? Is it like a city where people are on top of one another? Bro, watch the wings. Watch the wings! How do you communicate in heaven? Does everyone just speak English? If so, some words and phrases don't translate exactly. What about people that existed thousands of years ago before modern language? Are you able to communicate with them? Is there weather in heaven? What if some people like snow while others like perpetual sunshine? Do you get turns choosing the weather? If so, I'm choosing tornado every time. Is there gambling in heaven? Can you make wagers about what'll happen on earth? I bet you three halos Kanye says he loves hip. Dude, He's black. There's no way he's gonna. I I see I I see good things about Hitler also. <sighs> Damn it. So those are all my questions about heaven. If I missed any, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, every time you master, <laughs> your grandmother sheds a tear. So those are my favorite 15 videos. If I missed any you guys enjoyed, please let me know down in the comments. And just remember, you can't go to hell if you don't believe in it. I, I'm pretty sure that's how that works, right? Mmm, you know what you want to do? Oh, you want to push that subscribe button? Oh, push the button. Push the button.